Let's praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Am I singing? Oh, hallelujah. That caught me by surprise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8. Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8. To all of our guests, we're so glad that you're here this morning. And to all of the faithful people of God, we're doubly glad that you're here. You're what makes this thing go. The anointing of the Holy Ghost that we've all got. Hallelujah. Are you excited about being in the house of God today? Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant or after the same manner, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Previously, he gave it to them on tables of stone. Ten of them. And then... A myriad of them following the interpretation of those ten. Previously, these laws have been written on tables of stone. Now, he will put, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people. Now, there's a lot that goes into that statement. That's a, that's a blessing statement. That's a promise statement. Uh, you read it over and over again. And I will be their God, and I shall, or, and they shall be my people. And then the third part of that, when you read those first two, you're supposed to automatically think the third. I will be a God unto them, and they shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of them. That's the third part of that. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8 uh, has the longest, uh, I guess you would say quote. It's not an exact quote. The longest reference of an Old Testament scripture in the New Testament is here in Hebrews chapter 8. We will read part of it. Verse 7 of chapter 8. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Meaning if the covenant that was written on stone had been faultless. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. See if you recognize this. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Notice the difference. There's some language difference here. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws... In Jeremiah, he said, inward parts. In Hebrews, he says, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Uh, John 7, 37 through 39, the sword drill champions can get there. The rest of you, it'll be on the screen. You can read it. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the new covenant. But this spake he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Uh, not very good with titles. I don't know if this one will fit, but with a little moniker, we can hang on this thing on Sunday morning. Let's preach about the law 
in the inward man. The law in the inward man. Will you help me preach this morning? Before we're seated, let's lift our voice and let's ask God. He's already in here, but let's ask for his blessing in this service today. In Jesus' name, God, we love you. Thank you, God, so much for everything that you've ever done for us. God, you're so good. You're so wonderful. You're so worthy, and we give you all the praise. Everything that we have has come from you, God. It's a blessing from you, and we worship you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Somebody tell him how much you love him. Somebody tell him how much you love him right now. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. God, you're so good. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if your hands are free, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. You can be seated. The law and the inward man. Hallelujah. We got kids' church going on this morning. I believe it's Brother Wells is preaching in Jasper. Brother Wells is preaching in Jasper. Um, there's just things happening, and I'm excited about it. I think we're beginning to see some incredible things happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, does anybody wants to be a multiplier in the kingdom of God today? Does anybody believe what the man of God preached to us, that it wasn't just from a man, but it was from God? I want to be a multiplier. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to just win 10. I want to win 100. Uh, that, that's just, that's what, I believe that God can do things that are not just times two or times three. I believe God can do things that are times 10 and times 100. Yeah. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to be a multiplier? Yeah. And not just multiplying in terms of winning souls. I want your business to be multiplied. I want, I want your family. I don't, I don't know how this happens. I don't even know how the language works, but I want things in your family to be multiplied. Not the sorrow, not the trouble, not the arguments. I want blessings in your family. I want multiplied blessings in your family. Hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. Oh, is there anybody that wants to be a multiplier in the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. I spoke with my wife a couple days ago about this, and uh, I, I'm learning to recognize how the Lord uh, on occasion will speak with me. Maybe he's been trying to do it a lot, and I just mentioned it to my father just a few minutes ago. Uh, but I have, on, on a handful of occasions in the past few months, God has given me the ability, uh, this is the, these are, I'm trying to describe, uh, he has given me the ability to pre-see or to see before, pre prescience, uh, and to pre-speak with people and situations. And uh, within, a, a, as soon as I, I, I the, the way I describe it, I'm able to feel, I guess, something of their presence. God allows me to feel it, and then within just a very short time, uh, that situation will materialize, and I will have already spoken to it. I, listen, I, I'm not trying to weird you out on Sunday morning, but maybe we do need to be weirded out a little bit. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will let things begin to happen. And uh, I will have already had an opportunity to speak into the spirit of that situation, to already speak to that man. It just happened a couple of days ago. In fact, I told my wife about it the day, the very day that it happened. Uh, I, I woke up and was just kind of talking to the Lord a little bit. And, and even I, I continued to talk to him while I was driving down the road. And I felt I, I, I felt uh, 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 the spirit of a particular man that does not go to this church, and uh, I, I didn't know why I didn't pay attention to it. That's part of what I'm learning, Brother Hampton, is to pay attention to it. Uh, when the Holy Ghost is tapping you on the back of the head saying, hey, this is about to happen, and uh, I had no longer, I, I walked into Walmart, and I was checking out, and I was just about to walk out of the door, and that man walked in. I didn't see him. See him. He called out to me, and he said, hey, call me Reverend. Hey, Reverend. I said, hey, I don't know what God's going to do with that man. I don't know what God's going to do with that situation. All I know is that if this is how God wants to be a multiplier, I'm open. Is there anybody to open to God speaking to you? See, now some of you just got spooky right there. Some of you just got spooky. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will walk up and down your aisle on Sunday morning. The Holy Ghost will get in your purse. It'll read your mail. 
Maybe we get a little too comfortable in here. I, I don't know. But maybe we just need to have the Holy Ghost start reading some people's mail. I don't know. Maybe we need to have the Holy Ghost walk in here with the direct word. He's in here to do it. Does anybody want to be a multiplier? He's in here to do it. He's in here to do it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's clap our hands and let's love him one more time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's stay in the weird vein for a second. Church, I firmly believe that this is one of the types of things that God is wanting to do in our midst. Oh, we had a man uh, come and pray through. I say he prayed through. He prayed good. Uh, and and uh, I, 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 there was a lot going on in the service, and I didn't get to go shake his hand. And I didn't get to make a connection with him. And I had known him for years. And uh, this happened last night. I, uh, I, I, I'd been praying about it. I said, God... I want to connect with this person. And, and uh, so I walked into Peking Chinese restaurant. We were both him and I were involved in the fellowship of Peking Chinese food. I walked in and I recognized the back of his head and kind of the way he was dressed. I recognized him. And he was, he was already getting his food and I was waiting on mine. And, uh, and, the lady in front of me said, hey, can I help you? And I, and I said, uh, I said, just a second. And I called this man by name. And he turned around and he said, hey, this happened to me last night. I said, hey, how are, how are you? I said, man, I'm doing great. How are you? And I'm doing my, I don't know how to do this. I'm doing my very best to let this man feel the love of God. To let this man feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, because I'm not afraid if he says, man, uh, I just need God to do it. I'm not afraid to lay hands on him right there in the Chinese restaurant. Let, everybody, let the Buddhist watch. Because I'm telling you, God can, God can start a revival. I just believe God can start a revival in a Chinese restaurant. I believe you can lay hands on one man and pray him through to the gift of the Holy Ghost in a Chinese restaurant. And all of a sudden, three or four Chinese people get the Holy Ghost. Well, we're off the deep end right now. I hope the Holy Ghost finds its way into your life, whether it disturbs you or it blesses you. I just don't want the Holy Ghost to leave us alone. I want the Holy Ghost, the power of God, to be multiplied. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's love him. Church, it's time to reach for people, and God will help us reach further than we can reach. I'm telling you, God will give you the door if you really want the door. If you really want to be a multiplier, God will give you the door. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we need to be very aware that we are not simply inviting people to church. Come to our church. Man, we have a great kids program. Bring your kids to our Sunday school. Come to our church. We love you. Come sit on the pew with us. Chairs. It's more than just inviting people to come to this building. We're not just inviting, pe inviting people to come to church, but we are inviting them into an eschatological party. <laughs> we are inviting people not just to this building, but we are inviting them to an eschatological party. Uh, and it's not just eschatological. It's apocalyptic. Yeah, eschatological. Uh, what do you mean? Eschatological uh, is understood. The, the term eschatology, eschatology deals with the end times. And we are in the end times. Somebody say amen right there. We are in the end times. Eschatological is understood as that. It, it's, it's events. It's, it's, um, it's culture. It's everything that travels along uh, on, a, on a timeline, on a historical timeline. It rides a razor thin edge of the right now and it travels along a timeline to a predetermined end. I, it, this is an eschatological meeting on Sunday morning. This isn't just church. This is an eschatological meeting. Make no mistake about it. The events of this world are traveling along a timeline to a predesigned end. But our God shall overthrow everything 
that is wicked and our God shall overthrow everything that is evil and his kingdom will arise and you and I are, in, are part of that kingdom. So there's an eschatological party that's going on. You don't need to be afraid of the end times. God's in control of that. And he's not just in control of that and we're going to have to go through something. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe God's going to call his church out before it ever gets. I believe God's going to call his church out to be in his presence. Yeah. But this isn't just an eschatological party. This is an apocalyptic party. (laughs) Uh, Eschatological deals with things that are moving along a timeline. Apocalyptic means that we're dealing with things that interrupt time. Things that disrupt the norm. My life was going along this timeline, but all of a sudden the Holy Ghost broke in. Apocalyptic means that which is revelatory. That's where we get the word. In fact, our word revelation comes, it's the Greek word apocalyptus, uh, revelation. It's, It's when God opens somebody's eyes. It's things that disrupt time. Time was going along like this, but then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came breaking in. Thank God God didn't let me just keep traveling down the same path that I was on. He didn't just let keep letting events keep stacking up but he let the he let eternity break in on me thank God and when it did I spoke with other tongues as the spirit gave me utterance so when we come here to church we have to apocalyptize the atmosphere I just made that word up but you you got to be an apocalyptizer <laughs> We got to apocalyptize the atmosphere when you come in here. Yeah, you can't just be regular. You can't just be normal. You can't just be I'm a him or I'm a her. We can't just come in here with our problems shackled around our feet. No, no, no. You've got to let the Holy Ghost break in. You've got to let that world that is not yet here, you've got to let it break in. That's what we're doing on Sunday morning. When you see us get up and dance, when you see us lift our hands, when you see us sing, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to get you to understand you can reach up into the heavenlies. You can reach up. You can get a hold of something that's revelatory. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And that's what we've got to understand. We're not just inviting people to church. We're inviting them to an apocalyptic party. There ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Hallelujah. Maybe it stopped in your life, but there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. You got the real Holy Ghost, brother. You've got a party. And this is an apocalyptic party. This is where greatness breaks in. This is where the goodness of God breaks in. This is where the power of the Holy Ghost breaks in. This is where depression is broken. This is where anxiety is broken. This is where trouble is resolved. This is where you get healing in your body. This is where you get salvation for your soul. Oh, come on, let's clap our hands. Let's let it thunder in this house for a moment. Come on, do it for just another moment. Do it for just, somebody get some waving in your hands. Somebody get some shouting in your voice. Yeah. Oh, let's just, let's just do it again. You don't have to run the aisles right now, but let's just love him again. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's no small thing. Church, this is no small thing what we're involved in. Mm. Man, it's no small thing to come into the house of God and get your eyes opened. That's a revelation. Anytime you read, it's just one way to understand Scripture. Every time Jesus heals a blind man, when Jesus heals Bartimaeus, he's not just healing, he's not just mending ocular nerves. He's not just showing him the world around him. When Jesus heals a blind man, he's showing that he's showing not just that blind man, but everybody that's around that blind man who didn't know they were blind because they thought they could see good. He's not just showing that blind man the world around him, he's showing that blind man and everyone around him who he is. Yeah. 
It's apocalyptic. That's where we get the word revelation. Let me show me to you is what Jesus is saying. Let me identify myself to you. That's what Jesus is saying. So when Bartimaeus, when Bartimaeus, oh, it's just a little side note here. When Bartimaeus calls him, calls out to him and says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The blind man had revelation before he had his eyes open. And the people around him had, his, had their eyes open, but they didn't have revelation. But in one act, in one touch, with one word, God can open the physical eyes of a blind man that does have revelation, and he can open the spiritual eyes of people that weren't blind and give them revelation. And that's what's going on on a Sunday morning, the preaching of the word of God. You might have come in here with problems, and, and, and you know that you need God, and you're crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Or you might have walked in here and felt like you had it all together, but I'm telling you right now you don't have it all together but the one that can put it all together the one that can open your eyes is in the room today are you thankful for revelation are you thankful that you don't live some little wimpy life some little cornflake frosted mini wheat I like mom and pop donuts better than I like Krispy Kreme. Not enough to Krispy Kreme donut. Thank God we don't have Krispy Kreme donut church. You bite into one of them and it just melts. Thank God there's something to chew on when you get in here. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. I didn't eat breakfast. But it's no, <laughs> it's no small thing to come into the house of God and get your eyes open. That's an apocalyptic thing. Woo! Put the apocalypse off on you. And you think that's crazy. That's what Paul said. When you read the book of Revelation, or excuse me, you read the book of Ephesians, he said, I wish that the spirit of wisdom, that's the word Sophia, sophistry, wisdom, that's where we get the girl's name, Sophia. Uh, Sophia. That the spirit of wisdom, Sophia, would come upon you and the spirit of, in King James it says, and the spirit of revelation. It is, it's the spirit of, it's the wisdom of, it's the spirit of Sophia and the spirit of apocalypsis, apocalypsis. Uh, the spirit of wisdom and the apocalypse. Whoo, wisdom because we got to live right now. This is, this is just, boy, there's a bunch in there. There's a bunch in there. Let me just make this point. Wisdom because we got to live today. But you need the spirit of the apocalypse because you understand that there's going to be a day when we're going to live forever. Uh, wisdom because we've got to bring that day into this day. I'm going to tell you there's going to be a day when there's not going to be anybody walking around on crutches. There's going to be a day when there's not going to be anybody confused about their gender. There's going to be a day when nobody's going to have cancer. There's going to be a day when all anxiety is going to cease. There's going to be a day when all depression is going to dissolve. There's going to be a day when all family difficulties are going to dissolve. There's going to be a day when uh, there's not going to be any poor. There's going to be a day when there's not going to be any hunger. There's going to be a day when there's nobody that's broken. There's going to be a day when there's no more sorrow. There's going to be a day when we don't bury another loved one. There's going to be a day when all of those things are untrue and they're done away with and they're washed away. Way, but that's the spirit of the apocalypse. That's the spirit of revelation. We say, hey, it may not be happening yet, but that's what's going on in this room. That day is breaking into this room. Do you believe that on Sunday morning? Does anybody believe that on Sunday morning? Oh, come on, let's give God praise like we believe it. So it's no small thing. It's no small thing to walk in here on Sunday morning. You're still sleepy. You still got the little sleep crumbs in your eyes. You haven't eaten. You drank your coffee and forgot to brush your teeth. You're like, man, I hope I don't have to pray for anybody in the altar. <laughs> Just do it. If they're offended by that, well, it is kind of offensive. Go ahead and brush your teeth for you. Breath mints. We sell breath mints. See, that was Brother Johnson. That was a, I don't see him. He's probably doing something Sunday school. Or, oh, there he is right there. Brother Johnson, I put in a breath mint plug for you right there. Hallelujah. It's in here. Yeah. This is not just a, a gathering where we get together and eat a, little, eat a little Bible bread on Sunday morning. No. 
No, no, this is where you and I come to plug back in to the greatest power in the universe. Mm. This is no small thing. This is no small thing. It's no small thing to come here uh, and get your eyes open and unite. Part of how we get our eyes open, part we, uh, listen, you can just think, oh, well, that's just a Pentecostal thing. No, 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 no. When we come in here and we run these aisles, that's part of us getting our eyes open. Uh, when we come in here and clap our hands, that's part of us getting our eyes open. Uh, when we come in here, e even you may not be able to run the aisles. You may not be able to clap your hands. But if your heart and your spirit really worships God, first of all, it's going to come out of your mouth. It's going to come out of your mouth. There's no such thing as silent praise. Let it come out of your mouth. Let it come out of your spirit. But when we come in here and we unite in praise, uh, I always chuckle when I hear people say, well, I can just stay home. I get as much from God staying home by myself. No, you don't. No, you don't. You go to hell staying home by yourself. <laughs> Boy, that got a little tight right there, didn't it? No, you've got to come in here and you've got to unite with the people of God. You can't be a part of the body of Christ and not be part of the body of Christ. Yeah, and so you've got to come in here and worship with me. I... Uh, you might not be able to run the aisles, but you got to come in here and worship with me. You got to come in here. You got to come in here and let your praise and, and my praise. We've got to let it mingle together and go up into the heavens. Oh, listen, listen. To one. This is one of my favorite passages. I've got tons of them, cover to cover. Favorite passages. Listen to Psalm thirty-four, one. Very familiar passage of scripture. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that word blessing. Uh, oftentimes it's the word Barak. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. One of, one, one of the definitions, when you begin to unpack what it means to bless, one of the definitions is to be happy. Psalm 1, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man is what your King James says. One of the understandings of that word bless is happy. I will make the Lord happy at all times. How do I make the Lord happy at all times? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Listen, we're still talking about making the Lord happy. What makes the Lord happy? Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Listen, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hallelujah. They looked un unto him and were lightened. We're talking about revelation here. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Listen to verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, our praise, that praise that we just read about, all the way up to verse 8 is supposed to open a door. Uh, maybe we could say it this way. It's supposed to open up the refrigerator. It's supposed to open up the pantry. It's supposed to start the gas stove. It's supposed to get the bake. Well, no, they didn't have bacon. and they, they didn't believe in bacon. It's supposed to get breakfast cooking so that it smells. All of that worship is supposed to do something so that by the time you get to verse 8, you can taste, and that taste is going to open up your eyes. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just getting a taste will open your eyes. Just getting a taste is apocalyptic. So when we're running the aisles, what are you doing? We're tasting and seeing, and we're opening the door. We're making an invitation. You come taste and see. Yeah. Boy, I cut this part out of my notes because it was already going. When I was making my notes, I knew, well, we're already going too long. But listen, you guys are tougher than I, than you're tough. You're just tough. You can handle this long preaching. 
It's important to understand that everything that you see, if you're a guest in here today or you've just started coming and this is just you've been here a handful of times and you're wondering about these crazy people, have they lost their mind? When are they going to serve Kool-Aid? I don't know if I'm comfortable here. Oh, good grief, let me get something to hang on to. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you what's going on in here. These people have found something. You might think he's crazy for getting out and running the aisles, but it used to be bound by Budweiser. He could, he'd you run down the road to get Budweiser. You may think she's lost her brains, but you don't know what God delivered her from. You, you, may think that, you may think that we're just making a bunch of noise, but you don't understand the chains that God broke off of our life. You don't understand what happened when we got a taste. Our eyes were open when we got a taste. Uh, and it's important to see, it's important to understand that everything that you ha see happening in this room today, everything that you see me doing, everything that you see these people doing with their hands and their feet, with their bodies, clapping, worshiping, jumping, shouting, crying out, everything that you see happening on the outside is a result of something that happened on the inside. Every time you see somebody do something that we will call worshipful, praising, every time you see somebody do something that's outlandish, what's happening on the outside is a result of something that's happening on the inside. <laughs> God set people free in here. God's broken chains in here. Inner man, the inner man was changed in here. You may see a lady raise her hands. And tears running down her face, but she was brought out of shame. There's people in here that live that used to live in shame. They used to live a completely ashamed of their lifestyle. But thank God that God turns our lives around, and he doesn't just give us a new life, but he erases shame. I said, God erases shame. God erases condemnation. And I'll just tell somebody in the house today, it doesn't matter how far you've fallen. You might have backslid. You might have tripped. You might have stumbled. You might have had a horrible week in terms of living for God. Run to him today. Get another taste. There is no condemnation in him. There is no shame in him. And all of this worship is our testimony. This is our testimony to the fact that we came out of Egypt. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back to all of this stuff that... We read in Jeremiah and Hebrews. Because the Lord said, I made one covenant with them when I took them by the hand and I led them out of Egypt. Thank God he took us by the hand and led us out of Egypt. Egypt was a type of sin. Thank God we don't have to paint up. Thank God we don't have to dress up to please some man if we're a woman. Thank God we don't have to do certain things to obey our lust if we're a man. God took us by the hand and he led us out of Egypt. And we don't want to have anything to do with Egypt. We don't want their icons. We don't want their stars. We don't want their music. We don't want their sports. Thank God he took us by the hand and led us out of Egypt. <laughs> this is our testimony. We used to sing it. The, I don't know if we've ever sang it here. How did you feel when you... Came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness. You remember that, Sister Mickey? Came out of the wilderness. How did you feel when you came out of the wilderness walking with the Lord? Sounds like a simple song, but it's loaded with theology. Uh, well, then, they, then, then it'd get Pentecostalized. And we'd say, I felt like clapping when I came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness. I felt, and then they changed it. I felt like jumping when I came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness. I felt like jumping when I came out of the wilderness, walking with the Lord. Yeah. Well, I felt like praising when I came out of the way. Anybody feel like that? Came out of the wilderness. How did you feel when God brought you out? How did you feel when God brought you out, when God broke those chains? <laughs> Hallelujah. Our worship is a testimony. That's not just uh, kicking up the dust. That's not just throwing a little, that, that's not just having a stem winder. No, our worship is a testimony that we used to be bound, but God set us free. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's just, right there where you're sitting, let's love the Lord for a moment. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's lift our voice. Let's really love him. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
But listen, there's something that happens. You can be seated. There's something that happens when you get a really good taste of how good the Lord is. <laughs> Another one of my favorite passages of Scripture. There's a few passages that kind of gather all kinds of things up. They gather all kinds of things up and they put them together. And you go, oh, I get it. I see it. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 3 through 10. If so be, listen, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Hallelujah. To whom coming as unto a living stone. This is us. Or he disallowed indeed of men. That's him. But chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, that's the church, a chief cornerstone. I'm glad I go to cornerstone. <laughs> Elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Is he precious to you? But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Ha <laughs> ha. A royal, this is what happens. Listen, this is all based on verse 3. Can we put verse 3 up there? If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now skip down to verse 9. Ye are a chosen generation. If you've tasted. Boy, there's a lot between it. But if you've tasted, ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. An holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him. I'm talking about revelation here. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous revelation, if you'll let me say it that way. Into his marvelous light. And then he links back with that covenant line that we read in Jeremiah and Hebrews, which in times past were not a people. Uh-huh. Jeremiah, God speaking through Jeremiah said, And I will be a God unto them, and they shall be my people. The third part of that, and I shall dwell in the midst of them. You can read that in another place. Which in times past were not a people, but now are the people of God. We have a God, and we are a people. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You know what? I don't think we're going to get to that last little part. We'll have to preach that another time. The Holy Ghost is in here. How many feel the Holy Ghost in here? How many know that God is reaching out with his mercy and his grace and he is offering today. He's offering, come and taste. I've got plenty. Come and drink water. Come and buy of me. Without price, come and buy of me. Come and taste. The Holy Ghost is in this room. Why don't we just lift our voice all over the house? Come on, church, let's really pray. Come on, let's let the Holy, let's let the spirit of revelation come into this room. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. About the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the stand our feet all over the house as they sing. Come on. The Holy Ghost is calling. Let's stand our feet all over the house. This altar's open. Would you make your way to the altar? Your word. 
Somebody to pray for. Find somebody. Let's pray one for another. 